Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters. I frequently get asked about the concept of forgiveness and repentance. If a person wrongs another person, can that person who wronged them just merely go and ask God for forgiveness and repent and everything is all forgiven? No. Repentance, brothers and sisters, has four conditions in Islam. Number one, a person needs to regret what they have done. Number two, they have to stop any wrong they are doing. Number three, they have to make a commitment and a promise to Allah not to return to it. And the fourth condition, which is important and paramount, is that if they owe a right to people, any kind of right which they have taken from them or wronged them in, they must get their forgiveness or reconcile with them in some way or make it up to them or return the right or property that they have taken from them. Whatever it is, they need to get their forgiveness and make it up to them before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives them. This is from the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah al-Shura in verse number 40, وَجَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٍ سَيِّئَةٌ مِثْلُهَا فَمَنْ عَفَا وَأَصْلَحَ فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah clearly tells us that the retribution for an evil act is a compensation in the same way. Allah then says, but whoever chooses to pardon and reconcile with the person they have wronged, then their reward is with Allah. And then Allah says, he does not like those who oppress and wrong. This means, brothers and sisters, the right is with the person who is a victim. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forget their rights. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not automatically forgive someone who has ruined someone's life and not try to do something to fix it. Yes, Allah can forgive everyone, but He's also just and fair. And Islam did not come to oblige people to just forgive everybody that wronged them. In fact, Islam came to do the opposite, to give the rights of the victim and to keep the oppressors and wrongdoers at bay so they don't repeat their action of hurting other people. Islam has given us three options when we are victims and someone has wronged us. The first option is you have the right not to forgive if you don't want to and instead demand your right to be given back to you and litigate to get your right in this world. The second option is to choose not to forgive and say I will get my right in the hereafter. Allah will give me my right. And there is a hadith of the Prophet which is in Bukhari that a person who has wronged another if they haven't reconciled and hasn't sought forgiveness, hasn't made it up to them, on the day of judgment, their good deeds will be taken from the wrongdoer and given to the victim. Depending on how big the wrongdoing is, the person who wronged may lose all their good deeds and then the bad deeds of the victim will be transferred and placed on the other person who is the perpetrator. May Allah save us from that. And the third option is for a person to forgive, pardon and try to forget and say Allah will deal with that person as they deserve and will reward me as he knows and that's the highest category. At least you'll go to bed with no stress, you take it off your shoulders, you get to be happier inshallah and live your life. Why should the perpetrator go and sleep easily and enjoy their life while you are suffering? The point is brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for the victim not for the wrongdoer and is the wrongdoer who has to watch out. The Prophet peace be upon him towards the end of his life and the hadith is also in Sahih Bukhari. He stood up among the companions and said, O oh everyone, if there is something that you owe someone else, it doesn't matter what it is, or someone has wronged someone else and taken their right in any way, then deal with it now, reconcile, do it all well now and bring justice to it and give their rights back before a day comes where no wealth or any thing of power can benefit you. The Prophet ﷺ was very vigilant about the rights of people. In fact, after he said this hadith, a man stood up and said, O Messenger of Allah, I have a right that you owe me. He said, what is it? He said, one time you tapped me on my stomach and it hurt me. But 
The Prophet ﷺ said to him, here is my stomach, take your revenge. Instead, the man kissed it. He just wanted to kiss the Prophet ﷺ's belly. My brothers and sisters, therefore, rest assured, Allah has got your back and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you. And there is no such thing in Islam as people just going, taking the easy way when the rights of people are taken. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. And I do want to say one last thing. Forgiveness is the best thing, especially when it comes to family and people whom you love. Reconcile as much as you can. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages us to reconcile and make up with people who have become distant from us, if making up with them is better. Some people you can keep a boundary, some people you can limit your contact with them, see what benefits you, and all is good, insha'Allah ta'ala, so long as it's done for the right reason, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows your intentions. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.